Jen and Brian are a couple from Miramichi, New Brunswick that have adopted a low-carb lifestyle and maintained it for almost four years. They've got so much valuable information to share and their weight loss transformation journey is inspiring. Hi everyone, it's Dr. Keenan here and I'm so happy to be with Jen and Brian from Miramichi, New Brunswick. And today uh, they're gonna share their story of adopting a ketogenic low-carb lifestyle. Welcome guys, how's it going? Yeah, things are good. So everyone's anxious to hear and it's so wonderful to have a family here together. So I'll let you begin by how your journey started. Okay, well, uh, Jennifer's been interested in healthy eating for some time. And uh, I think it was about two years ago or through one of your initiatives, we went to a cooking class on low carb and keto. Uh, and so we, we, we saw several nice recipes demonstrated that particular day in the kitchen. And because of our previous interest, we had some of the ingredients already. We, we came home that day and uh, we immediately started with these recipes. And we've been on that uh, low carb lifestyle for a couple of years now. Actually, it was from Easter 2017. So that's a little is when, Yeah, so that's when we actually started. Yep. So that's pretty impressive, so you, over four years. Yeah. yeah. In the first, anyway, in the first year, uh, we managed to, uh, we had some good success. I think we had, uh, I know my case, I've always been, I've been overweight for, uh, you know, for 40 years probably. And so I had no particular objective. I, I know that, I know what a good weight is for me. And I kind of hoped I'd get there, but I did lose about 25 pounds in the first uh, six months to a year. And I've maintained uh, that weight uh, loss uh, for the most part in uh, whatever number of years it's been since. So I'm happy with that. And uh, when the, uh, when your most, when your challenge came along, we decided we would, uh, we'd give it a try. When was that? We've been into it for two weeks. We're now, finishing up to that. Yeah. yeah. And I, I have been on off and on like gluten-free and trying to find the one thing that would help because I have suffered uh, everything from acid reflux to obviously weight problems to um, I had uh, aches, pains where I didn't have places. And it was so bad that I was sitting, I'd be sitting, coming home from work, sitting at the table. And after supper, I would just be literally just finish my supper. And I literally, cra I'd literally crash and fall asleep right at the, the dining room table. So I had already visited with you a year prior to that. And we had started a journey. And then when your cooking came up, I pretty much insisted that Brian go. Uh, he was hesitant because he didn't want to be the only man there. I know, and that seems to be something in weight loss that seems to be a, a stigma, but it wasn't the case. And we got to your uh, cooking program for it was a whole half day. It turned out that there were men, women, uh, like uh, tall, short, whatever. So we know that health uh, challenges and weight is not prejudice. <laughs> That's the one thing we know. But I had just was barely, barely holding on to uh, a weight loss that I had before. So I was really, really going up again. Like, And I have a sister that has a philosophy. She doesn't want to go on a diet to gain weight because every time we, I'd lose weight and I'd gain more. So I was on that gaining more path. But anyhow, so when, like he said, the day we did have the stuff. So it was basically, we can do this. We've done it for the last four years, off and on to very strict keto and basically maintaining a low carb, no sugar, no gluten um, program. And it's easy in our environment to do that. I find it easy to do that. And when we go places after about two or three days, it gets a little challenging. However, I have been able to lose 65 pounds. And uh, however, I have been maintaining for two years. It's not the weight I want to maintain at, but I am maintaining the first time in my life, I think. So anyway, but I thought the challenge might help me break out of that maintenance. But anyway, in the last 
two weeks, I've lost four pounds. I'd like to I'd like to go back a little bit there and just say that when I started with, uh, I love sugar, by the way. Okay, I mean, I it's a family thing. We're, we're we love our sweets, and uh, so it was challenging for me to uh, give that up, but not really because the uh, the recipes, I guess, that we got four years ago or whenever it was, uh, they were interesting. And I do a lot of the basic cooking here and uh, they were simple enough that I had no problem with them and the food was satisfying. And uh, so I, uh, I'm, I was quite happy with the result. And the other thing was that, uh, you know, I've, I've always been fairly, you know, I guess diligent in getting, you know, checkups yearly and doing all the things that, you know, a 65 year old, 70 year old man should be doing to stay healthy. And so I did get the, you know, my doctor's checkups and I found that, uh, you know, any concerns I might have by increasing the fat in my diet, which is part of low carb, higher fat type thing, you know, burning that fat instead of sugar. Uh, but my results are, are great. I have, uh, I have very healthy levels of, uh, you know, the, whatever cholesterol you want to talk about and uh, my A1C, my sugar is, is, uh, is like low five somewhere, you know, and uh, so I'm, I'm, uh, I have all those healthy readings off of my blood work and so on. And uh, without uh, being as, act I should be more active. That's my only thing, I guess, on my health, my, my weight would probably be better if I were more more active which i i'm not right now i'm a little scared of gyms and stuff because of covid so uh, that would help me but other than that uh, like i said uh well i'm i'm let's talk about it i'm six feet tall i think you know if i were just under 180 pounds that'd be a good weight for me and i'm like 183 this morning so i'm, I'm getting close to where i'd like to be you're doing great brian and, and maybe if you can say you know you've You've talked about the, the weight loss and, and how it's been so, like, you know, the recipes that have been easy, but how do you feel? Like, how do you feel in your body what's changed in terms of how you were before when you were addicted to sugar? <laughs> well, <laughs> I suppose, no, I, I, never, uh, I never felt the crashes. I suppose they were happening with the sugar, but it's just a way of life to, you know, give yourself some dessert once in a while and have a nap or something, you know, but, uh, but um, what I do note with last week, and more importantly, probably, is that I can, uh, I can be more mobile. I feel better. Uh, you know, like just simple things like uh, getting down to the floor and, and uh, picking something up or whatever. It's a lot easier when, you're, when you don't have that extra 25 pounds. And so uh, I'm enjoying that part. And, uh, and I, feel, I feel healthy. And uh, and I have energy and so on. So I, I just overall my my I feel healthier that way. So and, and it's great, you know, because this is the changes why we want to keep on this lifestyle when we start to feel really good. Um, my mission, my mission is it's yes, the weight loss would be lovely, but my mission is now to anti-inflame myself. I have struggled. And I, education is liberating because I didn't understand. I didn't understand all my blood work years ago. I never would even ask for it. But then through uh, many of the programs that I followed with you, Tiffany, I have learned what CRP means, A1C. I've learned about my HDL, LMNOP, PMS, at all. So anyway, but what happened for me was extraordinary in that I didn't understand what CRP was. In fact, I've never heard of it. And uh, then when I remember going and you said, well, your CRP is 9.1. And I'm thinking, wow, that sounds good. <laughs> and then I remember you said, you have a tens like a marker of uh, uh, possible heart problems or disease. So my I started to say, well, how do I reduce this? And I've done a lot of research. Well, my CRP went from initially 9.1, went way up to 13.59 because, and I'm going to say this, and it's kind of outing myself, because the emotional stress and uh, period I had gone through, and I am so convinced that stress, um, adrenaline, uh, cortisol, insulin, that whole 
process that happens uh, with uh, related to adrenaline and stress was the fundamental part of continually to rise or to raise, sorry, my CRP. Well, this August, I had my blood work done again and my mission, I take as many supplements, my food. I am even questioning right now some sweeteners. I just keep trying to put those pieces of the puzzle together. Well, my, my latest report showed that it was only, five, uh, sorry, 4.51. So that is extraordinary for me. It really is the naturopath, everyone who's ever dealt with me over the years, and I have things on a medical chart or what have you, says fibromyalgia, uh, IBS. Um, I'm sure they say, uh, you know, paranoid, cranky woman, <laughs> anything, but uh, menopausal, whatever. But it is the diet. It is the program. It is also managing your stress and understanding that process. Uh, I don't think everyone understands what happens when the bear really isn't chasing us, but we haven't told our brain yet, or we haven't had the social um, uh, hints that say it's okay to relax, because that carries on in your sleep. Uh, and uh, night after night, it's uh, that cycle of uh, your body still thinking that the bear is chasing it. There's adrenaline, then there's cortisol, then there's uh, uh, insulin. And then, so there's the whole process. And we wonder why we get to parts of our lives where we say, well, I can't lose weight. I feel awful, I blah, blah, so it goes on. So my numbers, the important thing for me is not on the scale. My important numbers is that CRP and my A1C. And my A1C is very good, it's about five. And uh, I have used one of the glucose monitors off and on to help learn some of the things that are triggering that too. So that's me in a nutshell. Yeah, and I, I think I, I think you were wondering, uh, you know, after a few years of this, why would we, why would we start with the diet doctor challenge? But I think it was for myself. It was like a, I was interested in seeing some new new recipes after, you know, <laughs> having some standards for a few years now, and I have enjoyed the recipes. They're uh, they're basic, like they're. You know, I, I always say if you can read and if you can uh, boil water or fry some bacon, you you know you can you can make these recipes. It's it isn't difficult. And uh, I noticed that they're they're set up where you can prepare them. You know, if you're a working person, you can prepare them. Uh, you could prepare them both. Prepare them on the weekend, or you could do them uh, in the evenings because many of them are like a meal for this evening and and then for lunch tomorrow. So that kind of helps the working person to be able to prepare them the night before for the next lunch. And so, you know, those are, those are helpful things. Uh, the recipes are, are tasty and there's some, you know, some variety there. So I, I found it useful. And uh, for myself, I don't mind, you know, signing up for another five weeks just to uh, maybe uh, get a little closer to that, you know, get that next three pounds off or something and also get some new recipes. Well, it's wonderful to hear from both of you. And, and just to go back to what, you know, Jen had said earlier about knowledge being power, you know, and the knowledge that you, because I know you guys have researched a lot about a ketogenic diet and low carb lifestyle, and you've made lots of healthy swaps, because that's the key thing really is when we understand what's going on in our body, then we're more motivated to kind of continue along on that journey too. And the reason mm -hmm. I like the diet doctor is because there's so many resources for you, like you know, there's a lot of the video sections, there's the cooking video sections. Um, so it's, it's a really great resource for people to go to. And, you know, for myself, um, I'm a part of the Canadian clinicians for clinical nutrition, for low carb nutrition. And we really endorse Diet Doctor because it's, it's a quite a user friendly website. Um, in, in your household, though, if you could say, like, what are some of the key things? Because people say, you know, how do you keep this going? And I know you said you've made some changes. But if people are saying, what would you give them as their top hints to make your home a low carb um, friendly home? You have to be committed and it has to be, a, your kitchen has to be a safety zone, a safety zone. You can't uh, have a craving while you're watching a movie. For me, that's very psychologically ingrained. Our family, as we grew up, every time we went to the theater, whatever, it was always that, that treat and there was some bonding in our family around food. Um, anyway, 
So you can't be they have the, the, the craving and then go up and find something that's not low carb to satisfy that craving. That's for me, you have to purge. You have to purge. You have to make a commitment to only have, like only have those foods because now it's safe. No matter what you're going through, you can't do that much damage in a low fat treat. Uh, you get full before you could probably overdo it. I also have to be careful because he does a lot of the basic cooking, uh, following the recipes. I'm more an artisan cook and I like to experiment. I have come up with some amazing uh, treats like uh, chocolate, some really good milk chocolate. I, but however, I've discovered, and I'm, that's my biggest research is about sweeteners. And I uh, discovered that some of them I think are impacting my, uh, right now my stalemate or my hold on my weight. But anyway, if you do want to treat, you're going to have to make sure that it is a uh, keto friendly. It's a low carb. You, you know, you have to make your own uh, breads and biscuits and freeze them. The nice thing about the other thing I want to say about the two week challenge and the five week challenge, I don't have to um, monitor anything. It's already done for me. My carbs are already counted. My fat is already counted. My protein's already counted. That is the one thing that I kept thinking, oh, that's what I should be doing. I should have my carb manager back out and I should be saying, okay, I had seven olives. And I find that tedious. That is, it's hard for me to do stuff like that. And if I do, I'll only do it for probably about two weeks. And then I start flying by the seat of my hand or by the seat of my pants. And then, so therefore, when they say protein should look like a deck of cards, actually my deck of cards become a jumble deck of cards. Uh, so anyway, but this five week and two week challenge, it's like spot on, you, it takes all that out of it. You just have to, and we have been exchanging a few things because we've been on it long enough and I'm not a breakfast person. I am really not, it is really hard. I may have breakfast at most two times a week. Um, I, my system, I don't know where that came from, but I think we're all unique. I also, interesting enough, I grew up on mostly a Mediterranean diet. My family are Lebanese. So when we go back to using the, the raw olive oils and going back to using lemon juice and going back to me, except for maybe the, the um, a lot of, we had a lot of bread, like pita breads, uh, we and had rice. and rice. We had a lot of rice, but apart from that, it's sometimes some of these new recipes are very nostalgic for me. I taste the raw olive oil and reminds me, oh my jumpers, that tastes so good, and I forget. But these recipes bring back such a variety, and the Indian recipes. I love Indian cooking. I make my own spices. One of my best friends is from Bombay. I have learned so much from her over the years. So when we got into that garam masala or the, the next, say, in the five-week one, or this week we had a, or no, the five-week one, they have a buttered chicken. Well, you know, and uh, then we're even now saying, every time we have a recipe, we think, well, we had the chili. There's a chili recipe this week. And I said, I think that would be better if we actually served it over some of those konjac noodles. Do you know that? So... We are still bringing in that knowledge that we have and all, and those products are in our house. Yeah, that's the thing. I think, uh, you know, uh, sugar is not good for us. We don't have, we don't have, uh, we might have a couple ounces of sugar somewhere in the house, but we have, uh, we are, we're sugar free and uh, we don't miss it because we do have some substitutes and uh, we, we don't miss the sugar. Um, the other thing about, you know, Jennifer saying it's like, you know, in the lifestyle, you have to, you have to commit. And uh, we just, uh, we don't, you know, we don't use the rice. We don't have rice or sugar and, uh, and uh, the substitutes we find are, uh, are quite, quite good. And, uh, and we enjoy, we enjoy the recipes that we're using. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we're not missing anything really. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the, go ahead, Jen. Sorry. The brain, the, the, I think you have to get in your brain too. This is not deprivation. It's substitution. Mm -hmm. 
you can get a rice. You can get a konjac rice. Well, I have about five bags upstairs in my cupboard. You mm. can get uh, carb-free noodles. And again, I have them up in my cupboard. Uh, so you have to do some of the groundwork. But once that's laid, you have the foundation. And as you're just filling it in here and there. And uh, almond flour. I, <laughs> I used to buy almond flour in 25-pound bags and uh, freeze it. And uh, so anyway, that was quite a few years ago. But I have gotten away from using a lot of it lately because I'm back on the challenge. Because that's a sneaky little uh, carb, though. There, it's lovely. You make lovely bread. You make lovely cookies. And I make cinnamon rolls. And, but you know, again, it's a slippery slope. And it's, I know it's low carb, but there's still lots of fat in it. And you can overdo it on that and that end of it. But uh, I mean, it's not like you're going to, I don't think you're going to go as fast. I could go, I used to be able to go up like 10 pounds in a weekend. And like I was traveling and I remember traveling in Africa and I had to go to a function and somebody was making me an outfit and I had to go. Oh, so Friday I went away. <laughs> Monday I came back and got fitted. And really the whole outfit just didn't fit. And they were just shocked because that doesn't happen to Af Africans. Right. So, but I was like, I had gone to the city. I had chocolate milk. I had everything sugar for a whole weekend because I had been out in the rural, like, uh, part of Africa. So this was my, I had binged and over a weekend, I gained 10 pounds and it was like shocking to the Africans. They were just like, couldn't believe it. But anyway, that was, that's a North American mindset. And it's a North American, uh, social uh, structure. We bond over food. Um, I know my family always did. And so now even today it's Valentine's and I was thinking, you know, what should we do? Normally we would have gone to just a restaurant and got a great big meal. And today I'm thinking, well, why don't we just get in the car and drive? Because we haven't done that in a long time because of COVID. So those, again, it's a substitution philosophy or mindset and uh so you you kind of like either you don't have many choices you either commit and we're all going to go to the same place in the end but why suffer on the way it's kind of where you're at like i i have i have freed myself of so much pain oh my jumpers i was riddled riddled with pain head to toe i couldn't touch parts of my body because there was so much pain I couldn't go get intravenous without an ice pack. And that was a pediatric needle. So I had inflammation that I remember the naturopath always amazed that I had inflammation on the vascular level. When she touched my hand, the back of my hand, she could feel the infl inflammation. That's, that's, um, you know, that's your CRP. That is sugar. That, that's carbs. That's, anyway, I have chosen a different lifestyle. And the results are amazing. Let me throw in uh, just a little encouragement there. If, if there's other men out there that uh, don't mind cooking, like I, I, I don't mind cooking at all. I enjoy a good meal and I don't mind cooking it. Uh, the other thing is I like to garden. And uh, mm -hmm. so, you know, in New in Brunswick, I can, I can have uh, some sort of greens, uh, you know, in May or June. And so last year, for example, I, I enjoyed the gardening and uh, was able to, uh, you know, harvest stuff from, from May right into uh, late September, maybe early October for something. So, and I remember you saying there that, uh, you know, don't forget your uh, two cups of leafy greens every day. So, you know, two cups of leafy greens, not hard to grow. And uh, so I enjoy the gardening, the fresh produce, uh, couple of cups of leafy greens and four ounces of protein. That's a, that's a good meal for me, you know? Well, you guys, I must say, I am, I'm so happy that we had this time together, you know, to review all of this because you're such an inspiration to hear, you know, and I really hope this message to gets out. Like I've got so many great takeaways from just what you've said today, you know, from everything from, you know, making it simple um, from, making that knowledge is power, understanding, you know, the value of your blood test, listening to your body and how, you know, listening to those aches and pains as they start to leave you. And then that can be motivation. Um, how making a, a, your house a safe zone 
by eliminating those foods that you know can be danger foods. Uh, but the biggest thing is your commitment. And I think that's wonderful. And I hope that's a great takeaway that others will do is that they say, if we make up our minds, it is mindset that we can be committed because we wanna be committed to this change for our bodies, for our health and for our family. Mm. Yeah, that's great. Well, and, and you've been a big inst inspiration to us, Tiffany, like all along. Um, I remember the first time I went to see you and I had an article in my hand because I kept talking to doctors and talking and talking. And I remember presenting the article to you and saying, okay, this summarizes how I feel. And you say, yeah, I said, you said, I just came from a workshop and you just sound like the case study that we were discussing. And I thought, oh, there's hope, there's hope. And that's what it was for me. I tried to put on the puzzle together myself for years and I was quite successful on and off, but uh, there it was, it was difficult um, and challenging in a medical perspective because when you go to doctors and you're talking about stuff and they're like uh, arguing, and even though, you know, it's possible to be a subject matter expert in one or two areas of your own life that exceeds that of the knowledge of a medical practitioner. And however, unfortunately, most of them don't enjoy that or maybe feel threatened by it. I don't know. But it is possible to be an expert on your own health because you are the one that feels aches and pains, not the doctor. I know every medical book's going to tell them one thing, but when's the last time they really listened to their, their um, so many patients? And everybody's different. Everybody's different. You know, I, I take different medications that I feel are impacting lately. So I start thinking about that. And then I question the, the source of that medication. And then that leads to this little dance that we've been going through for quite a few years. And anyway, we have to negotiate and I'll say, okay, I'll keep doing this. If, if you uh, agree to read this research about it, whatever. So anyway, you have to be your own subject matter, matter expert on your own life. And you have showed me that more than anyone, that it's okay to question, it's okay to, but go in, you know, go in with part of the solution anyway. That's always helpful. I love that, Jan. And you know, again, I'm a patient advocate you know, I'm the captain of my ship. I'm the master of my fate is kind of what I want to get to patients and that no one is ever going to understand your body as good mm -hmm. as you, just like you've said. Yeah. So I um, hope, I know people will get inspiration from your message today. And I'd love to check back in with you again in five weeks to see how things have gone on. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> okay. Perfect. Part yeah. of the challenge too. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's a little more, uh, a little more like accountability. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So thank you both very much. Have a happy, very blessed, love-filled Valentine's Day. Take care. Thank you. Same thank to you. you. Okay.